Hello everyone and welcome. In this week's video, I am going to talk to you guys about two different softwares, Topaz Gigapixel AI, as well as On One Resize AI 2022. Both of these softwares are excellent choices for resizing your images, but which one is better? Which one is right for you? In this video, I'm going to be breaking down one of my images. I'm going to severely downsize it, and then I'm gonna try and upsize it again. Using both of these softwares, I'm gonna compare the results for both. Now, this is the right video for you to watch if you're trying to figure out which software to buy, or even if you need one of these softwares, um, especially for those of you that want to make prints, maybe you want to upsize small images that were taken on a lower megapixel camera, whatever it is, this is going to be a really helpful video for you guys to decide which software that you should buy. This also gives you a little inside glance at the interface of both these softwares because some people may like one over the other. So we're gonna first jump into Topaz Gigapixel AI where I'm gonna be resizing this image. So go ahead and sit tight. Let's go ahead and resize this photo in Topaz Gigapixel. All right guys, so we're gonna be starting this tutorial here in Topaz Gigapixel AI. Uh, this is what the interface looks like when you load it up. You can see on the bottom right, I'm editing this image that started out uh, 2,500 pixels by 1659 pixels. So pretty small image, uh, not very large. So let's say I wanted to print this image. I've got this small photo, whether it's small because maybe I don't have the original file. Uh, maybe I took it on a camera with less megapixels. Maybe I even took it on my phone. Uh, whatever it is, I, I want to upsize it because uh, at this small of a size, it's not going to print well when I print it larger. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a how I would upsize it here in Topaz Gigapixel. And this is actually a really cool app. It works pretty fast. I really do like it. The first thing I want to do is zoom in. Uh, right now I'm on zoom to fit. I want to go to like 200% maybe and just zoom to an area that will be good to preview the before and after. So here it is. Um, and then I also want to switch the view up here to split view. This is I really enjoy using split view because it shows me the before and after. You can see on the left is before and on the right is after. Um, so what I want to do here though is right now by default it's only set to upsize it like two times, not very much. Um, I want to really, really upsize it because I'm going to be honest with you guys, pretty much any software on the market is going to be able to do a small upsize like this. It's not very difficult. Uh, but what really makes these two programs stand apart, I believe, is their ability to do large resizes. So I'm going to show you how um, this works. So let's go ahead and look over here. Uh, what you can do, there's a few different options to do resizing. You can use scale, width, or height. So if I did scale, that would be like, I want to double the size. I want to quadruple the size. Um, whereas width and height are what you're probably going to use more often than not, which allows you to change it to inches, uh, pixels, or centimeters, whatever you want to use, and change the pixels per unit. I want to keep it at 300 for print, and then I want to change the height or the width. The cool thing about this is, let's say, for example, I want to change the output height to 30. So I'm gonna type 30 in there, I'm gonna click, and that is automatically going to change the output width to 45. So they'll snap so that it stays together. I'm way too zoomed in now, I'm gonna go back to 100%, um, because as we're making it larger, it's gonna zoom in even more. Now it takes a second to load. This is essentially uh, how long it takes to load on my computer. It might be more or less on yours, depending on what you've got. You can see it's done a really good job. On the left is before, on the right is after and it's done a really nice job. Now you've got some settings down here. You can change the AI model. For landscape photography, you're pretty much always gonna use standard, but you do have the option um, of using low resolution if your photo is really, really poor resolution. If you're making a print, you probably wouldn't do this, but say that you're like scanning in maybe some old files. You can also use very compressed, but let's say that you're scanning in some, like this says here, uh, old digital images, whatever you're doing, um, you could potentially use this. So a lot of different options here, but I usually just stick with standard. Uh, it's cool because you can hover over each one to get a little tutorial to figure out which one you should use. Now we're gonna go down into the settings here. I pretty much always just use auto. You can adjust these as needed if you want, if you need to suppress more noise or remove more blur, but I pretty much leave them as is. I like to keep the color bleed on down here and I don't use face refinement because of course this is landscape photography. If I was upsizing some portraits, I would maybe try that face refinement and see how it works. So this looks really good. Let's zoom out one more time actually to 50%. And uh, what I really like about this software is this sliding bar here to see the before and after. It makes it really easy to adjust settings. Uh, and then you can even see on the left side is before, on the right side is after on your image. So you can see 
it is looking really good. We've added quite a bit of pixels. So when you're done here, you can go ahead and click save image and you can choose your options. You can save it as many different files. If you're gonna print it, you'd probably wanna save it as a TIFF um, and you've got a couple different options here. You can choose where to save it. So I'm gonna save this and then we're gonna jump over same photo editing in on one resize. All right, now we've got the same image loaded here in On One Resize AI 2022. Uh, the cool thing about On One Resize is that it actually works within On One uh, Photo Raw. So if you're editing your photos in On One, you can open it straight into Resize straight from On One. You don't have to use it like as a plugin. Of course, you can use it as a plugin, which right now you can see I'm using it as a plugin. Um, but it does give you a little more usability if uh, you don't want to use a plugin and you are using On One Photo Raw. Anyways, we're looking at the same photo here. Again, you can see it's 2,500 by 1,659. Um, and now I can go down here and change some of the settings. So uh, we're resizing to dimensions. You can change it to long edge, short edge, width, height, megapixels, or percentage. This is really nice um, because say, you might wanna use long edge as an option because maybe you want to resize for Facebook and you wanna do 2,000 pixels long. Uh, you can just select long edge and then it'll automatically select the shorter edge for you so you don't have to worry about it. Nice to have a few different options. It's really nice for export sharpening. So we're gonna go down, um, we can choose a common size if we want, paper, photographic, square, video, or we can do custom sizes. Uh, I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did before, which I believe we did a width of 30 and the height came out at just over 45. I'm sorry, we did a height of 30 and the width came out at just over 45. And now this is gonna load out. So the one thing I don't like as much about On One Resize AI is that I don't have a way to toggle this as far as I'm aware. Um, you can toggle some of the other settings, but I can't toggle uh, this right now to look at the before and after. But I mean, it looks pretty good so far. So let's go ahead and go down into the settings. We can adjust the smoothness if we want our photo to appear more smooth. Um, usually this isn't something that I use a whole lot. Maybe I add like 10 points or so. Then we can go down into sharpening. Now the nice thing about sharpening is not only is this a resizer like Gigapixel is, but it also gives us a lot of options to sharpen. So if I wanted to sharpen this for print, I could click sharpening and change the focus, like make the focus better. Uh, I could sharpen for screen, sharpen for print. There's a few other options in there as well. I'm not gonna do any sharpening right now because I wanna compare this to Gigapixel, but this is really nice to have on one resize because it does allow you to not only upsize or downsize your image, it also allows you to do a lot of sharpening. I'm gonna turn that off, however, like I said. You can go down, you can also add some film grain. Not gonna do that on this image, but I'll just kind of show you a quick example. You can see here we can add some grain to the image. Not something I'm gonna be using here. You can also do tiling. Tiling would be something you're gonna do for printing. Don't worry too much about that. And same thing with gallery wrap. That's how you would make like a canvas print, but you wouldn't need to use that unless you're printing your own canvas prints yourself. So On One definitely has a few more features uh, and it is a little bit more complicated to use and I don't quite like using it as much as Topaz Gigapixel, but let's go ahead and save this. And again, we are resizing this to the same size as our other photo, 30 by 45.2. When you are exporting your photo here, this is what the export dialog box looks like. I don't think that it is quite as easy to navigate or use, but you can do a few different things. Um, I'm gonna choose to put this all right on my desktop, is right where I want it. I'm gonna hit open. And then you can go down and adjust some settings. You can change the file type. Right now it's a Photoshop. I'm gonna change that to TIFF. You can adjust all these different settings. Um, and there's lots of different things you can do here. Um, but since we're using resize, we obviously don't need to do any resizing or sharpening because we've already done that over here. And we can go ahead and just send that out by hitting export. So now we're gonna go compare these two images in Photoshop to see which one looks better. All right, now I've got these open in Photoshop. And if you're wondering why I'm opening these in Photoshop to look at them, it's because I just think that Photoshop has a really nice way of toggling through the images um, as layers to view which what the difference is and which one is better. First things first, I wanna get my ruler out just to show you guys that I have uh, done it to the correct size. So I'm gonna go Command R on a Mac to get my ruler out. You can see now that we are about 45 inches wide by about 30 inches long, exactly how we resize them. And now I have all three images. So when the original image came in, it was very small. It was just taking up a small portion of this screen. So what I went ahead and did is just dragged it out to make it larger so that we could actually compare on a pixel level at what the resizing softwares did. Let's go ahead and just zoom in here. I'm gonna zoom into about right here. Now this is the original image that we're looking at right now. 
you can see it doesn't look that great when it's blown up. Uh, I'm actually gonna even go to 100%. So at 100%, I'm looking at it just like I would be if I was sitting right in front of it, looking at it um, in person because it would be about this big. That's why it's cropped on the screen. So imagine that it's actually uh, 30 by 45. It's a lot larger than my screen, so I'm just seeing a portion. So I'm gonna be at 100% here. And we can see, first of all, is on one resize. Looks a lot better, a lot better. Let's actually scroll over just a little bit here. So original image versus on one resize. You can see that it has added quite a few pixels to really make things look really nice and sharp. Now let's look at on one versus topaz. Now you're looking at topaz. So we've got on one versus topaz and on one versus topaz. So you can see the results are very, very, very similar. The two both look really good. Both softwares are very, very acceptable. I would be happy with either one of these results. Uh, the difference in this photo, you can see on one adds a little bit of noise here, whereas Topaz kind of keeps it a little bit smooth. And then I'm also looking at over here and on one, this part is a little bit smoother, whereas it's a little bit more rough here in Topaz. So you can scroll around the image and look and just see original image here compared to on one, compared to Topaz. Um, they're both using AI technology. The AI technology is a little bit different though. So it just kind of, there's really no right or wrong to which one's better or worse. Uh, what I would go with and both softwares work really, really well. So let's talk about which software is right for you, which one you should choose. So you guys can see that both softwares are really, really great options for resizing. And honestly, I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. I would definitely say that depending on what you wanna do with your resizing, that one software may work better than the other. So for those of you that just wanna resize your images, you don't wanna do any sharpening, all you need to do is resize them. Uh, and I would recommend getting uh, Topaz Gigapixel. The reason is because I think it's a lot easier to use. It's a lot more straightforward. I like the interface a little bit better and it doesn't have a bunch of other options that are going to confuse you. It's just simple and basic. Now, for those of you guys that are either uh, A, using on one resize, or B, uh, those of you that want to sharpen your images as you're resizing, so those of you that might want to print and sharpen um, your images while you're resizing them, I would recommend picking up on one resize AI 2022. Um, both these softwares are pretty competitively priced. Usually they are about the same. If you guys look out for a sale, you can get it on sale. Otherwise, I think that both these softwares are great options and I would really recommend either one of them depending on what you wanna do. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. As always, if this was helpful for you, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm always hoping to create videos that'll help you guys to create better images. And it really helps me when you like and subscribe to continue making these free videos for YouTube. I post one every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.